access to funding and skills transfer need for, needed for business resilience remains the biggest challenge for many young entrepreneurs. Creativity, dedication and support could help uplift the sector. My name is Jolly Mokorosi and thank you for joining us on Wealth at Work, a show that focuses on wealth creation and education in South Africa. Our guest today defies a few stereotypes. She's not your typical entrepreneur, employer, media, or even IT professional. Join us today on Wealth at Work with uh, our guest, Tembi Ngema Butelezi. She will speak to us on her beliefs around how her parents created an environment conducive to her becoming an entrepreneur. So Tembi, thank you for joining us today on the show. Welcome, welcome. Uh, we appreciate your presence here today. So right off from the start, tell us a bit about yourself and your businesses. Okay, so my name is Tembi Ngema Telezi. So I'm a wife and mother. So in terms of my businesses, I, I run a media and events uh, a management business. So we do your rentals for sound, lighting, uh, video photography. So it's kind of the technical stuff I enjoy. I also do software. So uh, running a team and I'm a team lead and we deliver uh, banking apps and online systems. So when I when I first met you, Tembi, I was really fascinated by your business because I know you through my sister. You were at Rhodes at the time. You had started um, a business around the supply of airtime through the vending machines on campus. Um, tell me about how you came up with the idea, what you were hoping to achieve, how you stumbled upon this whole thing, and how you pitched it to your parents who eventually helped you with it. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I think uh, it, it was a fascinating time when we were all getting phones <laughs> and the, the, the supply of airtime, it, it was uh, pretty scarce. So we used to go to pick and pay or one of those shops off campus uh, to get airtime. And I kind of figured that it, it would be uh, great to have something on campus. So uh, even the capital story is quite interesting because I did pretty well uh, in matric. So uh, I got a bit of money from Rhodes. So I, I had my 19,000 rand there. Then I went to the parents to be like, uh, guys, <laughs> I kind of need a bit more money uh, to, to fund the machine. And uh, my parents have, have been supportive from a very young age, like from me selling sweets in, at school to washing cars to renting out my bike, which was illegal <laughs> at home, but they kind of let it slide. But yeah, so I think my parents kind of uh, uh, understood and saw the seed, even though they didn't understand entrepreneurship, they have just been very supportive. <laughs> That's incredible. What, what were kind of the specific things that they did to, to signal to you that we are just other than, I mean, like you did say they turned the other, the other way when you rented out your bike illegally, but what, what else did they do to kind of uh, signal to you that this is a safe environment in, for you to pursue your dreams? Yeah, so I, I think the biggest thing was uh, allowing and giving, uh, giving me permission. So they've just so many stories of them turning the other way. Uh, we used to we used to be the only kids with the TV game, Super Mario and all those things. So holidays, uh, we turned our lounge into a game, game club. So instead of throwing us out, uh, they just gave us their own TV. And just like what's it, guys? Move, move into the move into the garage. So it was, it, it was, it was, yeah. The nineties, we made a hundred bucks. <laughs> it was a lot of money from fifty cents. So I think for, for 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 me, the biggest thing was just their support. Even if they didn't understand, they wouldn't ask like your typical questions, like what's happening, what's the profits. Like okay, you guys are doing this. Okay, cool. Uh, we ask for what we need, and then just supply it without uh questions or uh prohibitions of like you're breaking this so many kids in our yard so I, just for me it's just the signs of support and allowing us uh to be okay that's awesome now you're married you're a mom you've got a kid um how are your parents um what is their role in this picture when it comes to your entrepreneurial journey yeah. So in, in terms of uh, the support is still there. So uh, in, in terms of being a wife and mother supporting me through uh, the transition. So one of the businesses I launched at home was an internet cafe. 
and when it was when i felt like uh this is not working i want to close it down my da- dad was like okay great job you've done a good job so far so instead of uh, just giving up uh let me run with it so he's uh running with it <coughs> on his side because he's seeing the value of it in the community so i i i wanted many <laughs> And it was, it was becoming a bit too heavy with work and job work and the other business, but it, it, it's, it's that type of support. And uh, them also loving uh, the, the grandkid and just supporting it any way they can. And even when I do uh, big deals, I, I know that uh, they don't have a lot of money, but I can call and be like, guys, I need a bit of money <laughs> with a couple of zeros. <laughs> yeah, and then, you know. They'll they'll also just uh, scratch around, uh, give me the money, and I and I bring it back. Now I do bring it back. <laughs> well, now I, you do bring it I'll back with the with the certain deal. So I do know that whenever I need anything in terms of investments and fast capital, I can call on them, and they'll be there for me. That's really great. Um, what are your views on kind of you know we see COVID nineteen. You know um, that's been that's been like wreaking havoc on on enterprises everywhere. What are your views on how we can kind of take, uh, or the youth can take their future into your hand, into their own hands? So, so I, I think it's it, it's pretty much uh, a, a, a dynamic mind shift. And I think it's, it's up to us who are a bit uh, further and are, ha- are more exposed uh, to expose the younger guys uh, to these opportunities. So I think the narrative, uh, even when we were growing up, it was like, okay, pass my trick, get a degree, uh, get a job. And and it's just to expose people to be like, no, there's, there, there are bigger things. Yes, you can go the job route, but there's also the entrepreneurship route. And even right now, when we speak entrepreneurship, it's more around um, tenders or ex- existing businesses. Mm-hmm. Tenderpreneurship. So, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so, so I'd, 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 lo- I'd love uh, I'd love us to be exposed to things like Silicon Valley. For me, th- that stuff blows my mind. I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm like, uh, people just with random ideas, they're going for innovation. It's not the stuff that they know. Like I know uh, when we talk businesses now, it's mainly retail, uh, retail focus. Uh, but uh, guys are, are taking uh, ideas and uh, turning them into um, big ventures so I, I think i think uh the big thing is just that exposure uh to be like there there are bigger things in terms of what you can do with entrepreneurship but it's also important to state that you need to start somewhere so that selling of sweets <clears throat> it is important so you get to learn what works what doesn't work Credit sales are not that uh, great because it's hard to recover your money. You make mistakes, you run your car wash, you make mistakes, that car wash grows into something bigger. So I, I know that we normally see people and they're, they've got big businesses with big turnover, but it's important to know the backstory where they started because mm-hmm. it's a very few people who start with the big stuff. Many people start with the boot of their car, they learn sales. So it, it's important to just um, start somewhere and, and, and grow, but it's important not to box ourselves into what we know now and just expand into those big uh, unicorn type of businesses. I like that you touched on, on selling sweets because I also started out selling sweets <laughs> with my mom's support as well. She helped me buy my first uh, stock from Macro and I did pay her back, by the way. <laughs> my mom like cash of note. She won't let you get away with it. <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was great. And I, um, having also touched out and started out my career thinking that I was going to go into into IT, but changing my mind in my second year saying, hey, this is another thing. <laughs> but I, I went deeper into business. But what fascinated me still was, as you said, the Silicon Valley. I absolutely love the concept of Silicon Valley. How do we create our own? You know, I've been to Kenya and I was blown away by what the, the young IT guys are doing in Kenya. Um, I love following uh, stories about some of the Nigerian guys and what they're doing, but what are we missing in South Africa? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question because I, 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 I've been pondering on it and uh, it's it, it's sort of happening, uh, especially like in Cape Town, Long Street. So you, mm. you, get, you get those um, 
uh, th- those things happening but uh, I, I i like taking it back I, I love my people so i'm all about the advancements of black people so i i think that there needs to be a lot of exposure there because we we're more brought up to be consumers so yeah. with uh with with our counterparts from different cultures and races uh when they're young uh, they're taught to be innovators they're playing games they're being exposed to different things so i think i, I think it goes to just the exposure of guys th- this is what's out there so with the fourth industrial revolution we must be getting in, in into preschools uh into primary schools uh teaching guys the technology and there's there's the consumer part of it and there's the development part of it and both of it is powerful so it's just the exposure once uh, once uh, people know what's out there so i also really love what um the uh, president of U- is Rwanda has done in, in terms of putting uh, technology oh, every, uh, yeah, yeah. everywhere yes i, I really love and the satellites <laughs> yeah, President Paul. Like in, in preschool kids, they're playing with laptops, and he, even if they're not coding, I know they're coding. But it just just mm-hmm. that exposure of touching technology at a young age opens up your mind. And when you get to the corporate life, if you're there, it just helps you compete uh, better with your other counterparts. So I think we must get in um, early and just have that exposure of that we are not just only consumers. we can also be the developers of these technologies so tembi thanks for thanks for the interview it's just been um incredible to get to know you a bit better and and you're thinking around your businesses and and how you how you're navigating things into the future i'm really hoping that um if anything it helps pivot somebody else to the next phase in their business so thanks for joining us once again no it's a real pleasure enjoy it's been so jolly <laughs> and all the best of luck with your businesses as well. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Thank you for watching Wealth at Work. We look forward to sharing more stories and profiling other dynamic entrepreneurs and business people. Please like and share and leave a comment telling us what topics you would like to see next. From me, Johnny Mokorosi, thank you and goodbye.